Argyle release today, and it's broken, but thankfully your Kingsman and Matthew Vaughn filmography obsessive is also a magical script doctor, and I've already got the solution. Let's get to it. <laughs> get Jane Goldman back in the writer's chair and Eddie Hamilton back in the editing chair. Huzzah! Script writing duties done. Forward the check to my assistant. All right, you want more? I've got it. I'll start by referencing something that Eddie Hamilton said about Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Ah, scratch the one. It's gone. It's out of here. Scram. He was talking about the train sequence and said that they really had to whittle it down to the bones because even though it could stand as full glory on its own, in the context of a two and a half hour movie, once you got there, whew, the audience was running on fumes and if they played it in its full glory, at that point, they're just exhausted and ready for the credits to play. Basically like me, five minutes into Bo is Afraid. Part one of this three-part fix is cutting out the most inessential part of the entire film, which unfortunately is London. Specifically, the action sequences around the hacker's old apartment. Look at me script doctoring my own script doctoring. Meta. And I hear you saying, what? That has some of the best moments. Just the laugh out loud, crazy Sam Rockwell-esque Henry Cavill going back and forth. I know, it's got moments I love that I laugh on a first watch and a second watch. I will laugh until the end of time when I see these. Roll the clips. But unfortunately, when considering an audience that can be getting exhausted, closing in on that two hour, 20 minute runtime, it's just repeating beats from the highly enjoyable train sequence. Plus it's got moments that kind of just drag the energy down, the energy down, drag the energy down, drag the energy down. Oh, John, John, what the hell is John? <laughs> Plus, it's got moments that on a rewatch just kind of drags the energy down. Like Sam Rockwell's extended bit about crushing skulls. It's funny, but it's just two times as long, which is so weird to say because I think it's only 30 seconds, but man, those extra 15, whew, all the air out of the room. And the waves of faceless foes, the extended sequence before they actually fall back on the crash pad, it's just kind of padding at a certain point. And if you were wondering, don't worry, I come with solutions as well. That's a script doctor's job. So instead of just throwing waves and waves of at this point slightly repetitive action at the audience we're gonna have a nice sneaking around we're gonna have some spy shit in the way of sneaking out of the building that'll cut down everything dramatically by time by budget and raise the tension in those moments so we're not just having fun laugh out loud action sequences that could get tiresome because of their quantity we're gonna have some ooh, on the edge of your toilet tension and that way, a previously, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, I'm not timing in the theater, comes down to a tight four minutes with a lot of tension that we get in and out. And then we can have the Fleabag Motel, the overheard misunderstanding, Ellie calling her parents into London, Brian Cranston getting his eyes on the anarchy folder, and then Aiden coming to save Ellie from that whole situation. At that point, let's have the twist and stomp, but just that one part of the action sequence. And then we have a nice little morsel of action before we go off to Paris to the vineyard. Now we're going to get back to a couple other action beats that really need to be folded into each other, but first we need to fix Ellie's backstory because it really just doesn't make sense why such a loyal division agent like Rachel would need to be brainwashed into believing that she's Ellie Conway. So we need to put in an extra explanation. Maybe they start telling her that she's Rachel and she starts rejecting it and mentally that's having an adverse effect so they go to the brainwashing or we get a hint that they knew she was going to turn so we get the Ellie brainwashing as their last resort. Because without that, those two plot twists of her having been brainwashed to believe that she's Ali Conway and her being still a loyal division agent kind of rub up on each other and not in the way Aiden would like. And now for those two action beats that really need to become one for this script doctoring to be complete. And it's not going to be the smoke sequence getting cut, even though Jeremy Johns didn't like that. Although I will say, I think his complaint is part of the fatigue he might have been feeling. That's my guess, because ultimately, especially on a rewatch, I knew that it was it wasn't about being able to see all the people being shot. It was about Ellie and Aiden and their love together. That's why the focus is on them and them looking at each other and dancing. It doesn't matter who's getting shot. It doesn't matter if you can't see them getting shot. That's not the point. And it's not the ice skating one either, because that's freaking great. It is the next two beats, because Brian Cranston trying to make their faces into Swiss cheese with Clementine, that worked. But then after that, when they're out on the boat and it just keeps going, now we've got four very different action beats and oh, that's just one too many. So we need to take the Brian Cranston server room stuff and bring it outside. Bring it into that fresh air. Have him and Clementine be the advertiser and have her and the ballerina
between a dance song be the entree, and basically this is how it's gonna play out. He'll bring her out, have her start playing the song, threaten them with Clementine, the cat will come and claw his face out, Aiden will shoot him, and then after all that, he'll realize, oh fuck. Rachel is mind controlled. Now you've got one setting having it flow more evenly instead of feeling so segmented and then that solves everything for the conclusion and we can still have the payoff to the twist and stomp and have Kira avoid that by helping smash the ballerina dance box thingy. I'm tired. <laughs> also when Rachel stomps down you can't have Aiden immediately say you missed. You gotta wait a couple beats just to let there be some tension. Learn the lessons from Treasure Planet. Come on now. And so since you're still here, one more special one for the road. We really needed Henry Cavill and John Cena to kiss. I swear to God, this whole movie's a waste without it. And that was it for my script, Doctoring Vaughn. I'll get the check in the mail. I'll see you on the next set. And you in the comments, tell me anything else you'd like to change about this film. And who's excited about that mid-credit scene? <laughs>